I started to uh, do some work for Metallica, I think three or four years ago, right after Luke Jenks did uh, the first um, support for a Metallica show in, in Iceland on the Reykjavik concert. That was the first time they used the Milo system. And um, the year after that, they toured uh, on European festivals and did some, some headlining concerts where they got our support for concerts in, I think it was Arnheim and uh, somewhere in Estonia. And uh, yeah, that was the first time I worked for, for Metallica. And um, the next years we, we toured with them and uh, I think we gained a lot of uh, trust and, and respect from the production side, especially from Big Mick and from Paul Owen. So they saw that, they, that we knew what we were doing. We, we know from the work with Metallica uh, in the recent years that they need something like 138 to 140 dB. So this is what Big Mick really uses in his concerts to make it a big impression and a big show. And to get these, we needed much more subs. So we needed something like 40, 40 or maybe 48 subs to, to get that amount of energy in the hall. And uh, yeah, so I was thinking, how can we arrange that? So this was how the idea of this uh, array, uh, array was born. So get the sound sources together and as close as we can and make it a line array and find the position that is best, which is just the center of the hall. And here we are. <laughs> the most complicated part was, of course, to establish that kind of array uh, into, a, into an international tour production because a design like that had, had never been done before on a, on a tour like that. And at the first sight, it looks a bit strange if you play something like five tons of subwoofers over the drummer's head. And uh, yeah, like I said, we, we earned a lot of, of trust and, and good cooperation with, with the people from, from Thunder Audio, with Paul Owen, and of course with Big Mick. And Big Mick also talks to the band. And so in the end, we could do it. So what I'm really proud is that the TM array uh, is for my experience, the first time that the needs of sound or sound design won over lighting design. Because it was a four week or five week fight with lighting designers to get the subwoofers in that place and make clear that this is not the way uh, they should put uh, trust follows there and some, some uh, stuff like that. So usually when you're doing sound design, uh, you are the last one in the chain who gets asked for his opinion. The first one is always the lighting designer, maybe the camera guys if it's a TV show. Then the video guys come in and say we need screens here and there. And when this is all done, somebody tells you, OK, you might put some loudspeakers here and there and make sure it's not more than 1.5 tons in total or it gets too heavy for the roof. At that point, we could say, hey, we're doing a concert. We have the best band in the world. We have the best production in the world. We have the best front of house engineer in the world. So let's do the best sound design in the world. And if it's five tons in the center, well, then lighting design has to deal with that. So yeah, here we are. <laughs> the last decision was made by the band themselves. So. Uh, when, when Big Mick or, or Paul Owen talked to the band about this whole thing, because uh, there's so many levels of management involved in a production like that, uh, that sometimes the band doesn't get what is going on. But of course, they are the ones who pay the whole thing, and uh, they make the decisions in the end. Before the tour, we did two shows, in, in uh, one in Berlin and one in London, which were kind of pre-release shows uh, for, for the Metallica fans. And this was the first time we tried this kind of array in, in a real situation. And uh, there were a lot of uh, comments after the concerts who got through even to the bands. You know, there were people like, like Jimmy Page standing at front of house at, at the O2. And so a lot of people that have access to the band. So these comments that they, these people gave helped us a lot to uh, get this design into the tour. Because when we did the Berlin and the, and the O2 in London, it still wasn't clear if we could do it. So production said, OK, let's try it out here. And you better make sure that this thing works. Uh, but at that point of time, they still had their 16 truss follows in the center of the stage. And uh, they were thinking about hanging uh, Carduit sub arrays around the stage. 
I just did a calculation that we needed something like 96 subwoofers to get the same output out of the cardioid arrays uh, compared to what we got from the TM array that we got now. So uh, it's not only about design, it's also about getting the most out of the least number of boxes, which is a big thing if you go on tour for two years, if it comes to truck size and production costs, of course. I was, I was always absolutely confident that it would work, um, although I had no idea what the impression would really be like, because uh, talking about a thing like that and, and seeing it for real, uh, getting the impression of, um, impression of sitting in a hall like O2 in London or Berlin, 50 meters from the, from the array and, and getting an impulse response like from a studio monitor is, is you, can't, you can't imagine that before you really do it. So um, when we came to Berlin and set up the system for the first time, you know, there was uh, Paul Owen running around uh, all the time telling me, you better make that work, you better make that work or we get in big trouble. Uh, of course, this is the moment uh, where you say, okay, <laughs> I think I better make that work now. Um, and the first moment we, we put the first CD in, in the system when it was all set up and played this uh, tune by Infected Mushroom that uh, Big Mick likes to use for his setup, I just stood there and said, wow. The wow was even bigger when I went up all the, all the, 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 the lower and upper deck in the hall. Because, it's because it was even more impressive there. I mean, I, I know from a lot of big shows how the sound changes when you go up the decks and, and the higher you come, you lose sub-energy or it gets totally inconsistent. There were places in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the upper deck where I said, man, this is just like listening to it at home. In, in an empty venue where you usually walk around during sound check and say, oh my God, this reverb is killing me and I hope it gets better when the crowd comes in. But even in, in a totally empty venue for 20,000 people, we were sitting there in the night before the concert, so, so Big Mick, Luke Jangs and me, we were sitting there on the grandstand and listening for music and making all the people in the venue mad because we listened at it at 135 dB. And uh, this was actually the first time I saw Big Mick going up to the upper deck in a hall. And we were sitting there for half an hour saying, yeah, cool, now a big video projection and it would be a perfect night. <laughs>